Good morning, all. We've called the meeting to order and welcome you to the St. Lucie School Board work session for September 22nd, 2020. If you would please stand with me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. We have one item of action for the board to take this morning. Um, Item 2.01, our human resource out of field report. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Madam Chair. I recommend the board approve the, out of, the HR out of field report as submitted. Okay, board members, we have the recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. So we will move now into our items for discussion and our strategic planning. And Mr. Superintendent, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone. And um, so what we have this morning, we're going to, uh, Dr. Wilde is going to do a presentation on our African American curriculum or equity and diversity training. Terrence will follow up and do just a very brief uh, update as to where we are with our computer and our computer distribution. I'll make a couple of announcements regarding the COVID numbers and complement a group, and then we'll go straight into um, uh, the executive session, which um, have a lot to share in there. So, um, Dr. Wild, come on up. I know that this is, uh, she's gonna share with you what we're doing. I know this has been a, uh, a topic around our country right now uh, with um, events that have occurred, and we've had some, uh, some um, questions from our community as well, and I know that uh, Dr. Wild, Dr. Wild in the chair uh, both went and met with some groups in Fort Pierce, and so I thought it would be a good idea just for her to be able to give a, uh, an overview to the board this morning as to where we are and what we're doing in our school center. So Dr. Wild, take it away. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Madam Chair, board members, Superintendent <coughs> Gent, very pleased to be here. Yes, we are eager to share all of the hard work that's been done by the curriculum and professional development departments. I do have um, some of those members with us this morning. In the audience, I have Megan Green and Kim Jay, our directors of secondary and elementary curriculum, as well as Liz Pruitt, our coordinator of curriculum, Dee Dee Campbell, our coordinator of professional development. Our director is currently conducting a training right now on our new onboarding procedures. And I also have our um, curriculum specialist for social studies, Kate Ems, who you all know, and our um, ELA curriculum specialist for secondary, Kimberly Cooper. And they've all been integral to, to this work. Um, so as we get into it, just want to review the required instruction component that is in statute. Uh, we have talked about this before at previous board workshops. Uh, regarding lots of different topics. I believe there's 20. You all have a copy of the PowerPoint. Actually, you have two copies. You have one in your folders, and then you have the one that has all of today's uh, topics on it. In the required instruction components, there's about 20 items. Uh, they're almost all social studies. There are some science and health topics as well. Um, they include contributions from populations. Um, it talks about the Holocaust, Latin American history, and African American history is one of the components. It also has the requirements to teach patriotism, Constitution Day, and so forth. And now, as I mentioned recently, there is a new requirement um, that each year we report how we meet the requirements of all of these different topics. And we have to enter all of this into a portal uh, for required instruction. And if anyone ever wants to look at it, this is, this is what it looks like on paper. It's very thick for all of these items. Um, and, but it does outline how we accomplish all of these goals. For African American history in particular, um, as well as all of m most of these items, we have included them in our scope and sequence, which is our required instructional map, so to speak. So we have also created resources um, or purchased resources, embedded them. Um, in addition, now that we're online, we have created Canvas modules for, um, to ensure that these specific topics are taught. So to pull out specifically what's required in African American history, um, you'll see it is about the history. Um, this slide here shares exactly what must be taught, 
we do go above and beyond that. Um, you'll see in a second that we have integrated African American studies throughout our curriculum um, and not um, isolated it to the specific courses where it's outlined. We also do follow, um, there is a Commissioner's African American History Task Force. And um, you can find their website. And on their website, they share materials. And we, we do utilize that website um, because we know those materials have been vetted. And they also share the seven elements of what they recommend you cover in this required instruction for the African American history component of it. This is just to show you where the standards are embedded within the curriculum. In elementary school, there is at least one standard in every grade level. And you can see that it's divided. Um, it's a little bit different in the early grades in terms of what we cover. And it's, you can look at the grade levels there, and it'll show you what one social studies standard or two social studies standards per grade level. And then in fifth grade, there's a much heavier emphasis on it. We have gone above and beyond that in terms of just keeping it in social studies, and we have created elementary integrated lessons for our teachers. It is our required scope and sequence. So embedded within our lessons, you will see in first grade, it's second quarter. In fourth grade, I believe it's fourth quarter. Um, there is a specific place where it must be taught. And we've aligned the text selections for English language arts to the social studies content, so all of their resources align. It just makes it easier for the teachers. We're not asking teachers to go out and pull their own materials for this instruction. In middle school, there's at least two standards per grade level, and this breaks it down for sixth, seventh, and eighth. These are in social studies classes, and there's a different social studies course in each middle school grade level, but this topic is covered in all three of those. And then in high school, you know, as you know, when students are taking specific high school courses, you're going to see a heavier emphasis on it. The heaviest emphasis is actually in 11th grade in U.S. history, but you can see that it's also in world history, um, which is in 10th grade, and it's also in the senior year. And then there is an African American history elective course. That is a one semester elective that is offered every year, and whether or not it makes just determines, uh, is determined by having enough students select it, just like any other elective in high school. We have also created secondary integrated lessons, and although the English teacher and the social studies teacher are two different people, we, we try to time it um, in the scope and sequence so that they're teaching using text that relates to what they're learning in social studies, so they have been integrated as well through a lot of hard work and curriculum. This is done for the teachers, again, to make it easier. And then they have taken all of the text selections uh, for ELA and outlined, and you do have a copy of this in your folder. I, re I realize you can't see it on the screen, but you do have a hard copy. Um, they have outlined for middle and high school all of the text selections, what is uh, the topic along with the author and the genre. Um, but it does also share what the student connection is. So if it is related to African American history or um, contributions of Latin Americans or whatever the topic may be, it is illustrated there for our teachers um, and for anybody in the community that's, that's interested. You already all know about everything we do with Martin Luther King um, and that, that holiday. We do a lot in the curriculum with that along with um, the work of Dr. Perry and the parade and all of that. Um, in addition, sometimes there's a misconception that African American uh, contributions or studies is only taught in Black History Month. Um, and so we're trying to move away from that perception by showing you that it is integrated all year, all grades. Um, however, there is an extra emphasis um, during Black History Month. And these are just samples of, um, uh, that's, that's a neuroscientist on the right. Um, that's emphasized for uh, emphasis in science. And then um, there's a whole handout in your folder there with black mathematicians um, to, we're trying to encourage students to uh, develop a love of math and so tying the two together. And that is Chris, Dr. Christine Darden, who was um, you know, one of the hidden figures um, scientists. And also she is going to be the upcoming speaker at the, I think it's the Florida Math, conference um, that some of our folks attend, so they're very excited for that. Although this is not in our department, I did um,
collect this information from uh, Bill Tomlinson's department and Tracy's. They um, do have an emphasis on diversity and inclusion within our SEL, our social emotional learning um, curriculum in all grade bands. So if you look, um, in fact, in, in elementary school, uh, diversity and inclusion is a heavy, heavy emphasis uh, for teaching students how to treat one another. Um, so you'll see that's all through there. I, I don't go into a lot of detail in today's presentation, um, but I'm sure they could if that was something you were interested in. Um, I, we're proud um, to just note, uh, we have held this distinction for uh, quite a number of years now. Um, we are one of nine Florida districts that were recognized by the commissioner's African American Task Force as an exemplary school district. Um, they're looking now to do another round of updating that. Um, so Kate Ems is on top of it, making sure that if there's any new requirements that we meet them uh, because we want to remain on that list of exemplary school districts. And actually, as a result of that, we've had other districts, even in other states, come to visit us at, or take a look at our web, website, our curriculum resources, and give us a call. Moving on to the professional development focus, I mentioned in an earlier presentation of what our four focus areas are. Um, and this is our newest one with a focus on equitable learning environments with diversity and bias. And uh, this year, with the, ch the change to not having large gatherings, we made sure that this training could be delivered to everybody through um, on an online mechanism. And so we do have a 20-hour course developed now um, on this topic that focuses on equity, implicit bias, and social justice. So far, we've had 1,969 faculty and staff complete the first module. I'll show you the titles of all the modules in just a minute. There are eight total. Um, we do have about 100 people that have completed all eight, but those are the high achievers. That's way ahead of schedule. <laughs> um, so that is a course that people would take throughout the entire year. And then um, our professional development department also completed a leadership facilitation guide for any uh, principal or school leader that does do it um, for the whole faculty as opposed to independent um, online learning. These are the different modules that are covered. So you can see a heavy emphasis on confronting your implicit bias um, and reflecting on that, um, understanding equity and inequity, uh, the equity literacy framework, teaching tolerance, um, responding to hate and bias, social justice activities, and reflecting on diversity. Um, I hope that, I know everybody in the audience can't see this, um, but these are some of the comments that our teachers made after completing just the first module. So they're always asked to reflect because the number one priority with professional development is to change your practice, um, to change your thinking, and to change your action. So they were asked what um, resonated with them and how might this change their practice. So these are just some of their quotes that we wanted to share with you. Although there were hundreds, um, we chose six to put on there and you have them on your slides. Um, and they were all so positive. Um, people making comments like this was the best training they had ever had um, because it did ask them to look at their own beliefs. And I believe that is the last slide and um, I'm open to any questions that you might have. Madam Chair. Dr. Mills? Dr. Wiles, um, you did a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Um, I think that there's a disconnect with the community and what we're doing here. And so we need to try to bridge that uh, with parents and, and the community. And we, we need to discuss how to do that uh, because the community needs to know what we're doing. Um, and I think that uh, I'd like to be able to be part of a task force where we do that and make that happen. Uh, and only the wisdom of your department uh, could really bring us to that point. But you did a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we may want to bring some key people in the community to actually see it in action, you know, so that they can take it back and say, oh, this is being done on this level and that level. My only uh, sure. um, desire after the presentation is that we make sure that it's merging, that you know, with all of the courses uh, in some way throughout the year, 
Uh, you, is, social studies has really been fantastic what we've done, but even more with the sciences and more with the maths and you know addressing the uh, policy that be on that level. But uh, absolutely, um, you know, even to have this presentation done to some key people with some key people in the community. Uh, and I wanted to also uh, ask if it's okay if board members be able to take those modules as well and give us the means of how we could do that as individuals if we desire. Absolutely, a lot of excellent suggestions that you just made. I, I will mention that I think um, our parents will see it more this year than they ever have before. Um, I know we've already um, had some parents let us know that because of the online learning. So they're seeing the modules themselves when their children are, are doing them. And by the time we get to the end of the year, because they're not all at the beginning of the year, they're integrated throughout. Um, I think a lot more of our parents uh, will see it this year than they ever have before. But you do raise a, an excellent point because a lot of people think it's only taught during Black History Month, which is not the case. Um, we did focus on the mathematicians intentionally there because we don't, in mathematics, we don't really ever stop and teach about who the mathematicians are, any mathematicians, because we're teaching them the mathematics, not the people behind it. Um, so, so with that said, we did want to pull that out and, and create that as um, a special lesson, an additional lesson. Um, but excellent points, and we'll, we'll work with you on that. And sure, we can make those modules available to, to folks as well, to, to any of you. Madam Chairman, woman. Dr. Wild, I just want to thank you for this, uh, pr this presentation, but also for last meeting, too, you did the equity report. And that was a phenomenal report in regards to student achievement in African American students, seeing the amount of rigor that has increased over the last five years, also in CTE too. Mm -hmm. And if you're going out in the community board members, please refer to that report because that was a fantastic illustration of how our community, how our community is coming together, and our children are getting educated, mm -hmm. because. That, would, that, that gave a clear picture of who we are and how well we're doing. It didn't give the results, but it tells you that our students are now being challenged in a, in a unique way. So if you didn't, if you skimmed over it, just go back and read. I think it was like 28, 35, 28 or 74 pages, but it was a great report. And I didn't say anything last week or a couple weeks ago, but I do want to thank you and your team for doing that. Okay, and thank you, and, and let's not forget our graduation rate as well. Yes, 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 yes. Madam Chair, uh, one problem with being ahead of the curve and ahead of the state is sometimes it becomes so infused in what we do that we don't pay attention to, it's just part of what we do. And I think that's where we are. Uh, I think Ms. Hilton and I were in part of that major discussion way back in the day about what we need to do. do. And we had some opposition uh, because there was more interest in equality and not equity. Mm -hmm. And so fighting that, that discussions were uh, uh, very enlightening, shall we say. And what we, have been done, what we have done has been shared with the State Equity Committee because what I found is that that group of uh, nine people that we seem to be the only county that has actually addressed anything. And so um, I'm very willing to share uh, because it was a kind of a battle to have people look at our students in a different way and understand that equality and equity are different things. So uh, I'm very pleased with this. I'm very pleased to call attention to this. Our AAUWs in this county used to do women who changed the world essay contests. So I don't know, I'm not as, well, Carl taught math history, so I know some of it, but. Um, but the women in here were part of the discussion. The women mathematicians and the scientists and stuff were part of that discussion a long time ago. And we found that our students that, uh, they were middle school, that our students that participated learned a lot. And then they asked questions of the panel who was doing the essay contest judging. So it's been a very kind of exciting pathway. I'm very glad to see this and I'm glad to call attention to what we are, are doing and there are resources now, I think I told you some, that on public broadcasting and YouTube of wonderful in-depth studies. Last night they had one on the Spanish in Florida and it talked about how in St. Augustine everybody was equal 
and what happened to change that. And it's very, very interesting and it's very local. So there are some resources that, that are out there calling attention to some of the things we've been talking about for decades. Madam Chair. Helen, thank you so much. I have so many emotions in looking at this, especially in our present day of what we're going through in this country, um, where we divide people up by language and color. And for some reason, we think people are less valuable because they speak a different language or they look different from us or worship differently or whatever it is. It just seems like a time of division. Um, I've always held that we stand on the shoulders of giants and I think we all do. And it's important to me working with young children that they see people that look like them. And I think politically it's important that children see people that look like them because that is their connection. And how important it is that we are raising the future, that our children in our schools see people that not only look like them but have achieved beyond anybody's expectation from the very most humble background they have risen you know to become incredible leaders i mean this is just amazing and your team have done a beautiful job i know you always give credit to everyone um, but now more than ever i think when kids have good role models they tend to keep a little more on the straight and narrow but if they don't have good role models um, they're, they're going to fall by the wayside. So we, as a community, as a school system, this is, this is big. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome. And you mentioned leaders. We also have leadership training on this topic going on throughout the year as well. And uh, Dr. Mills participated in our first session, but that will be ongoing. Thank you, Dr. Wild. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Wild and her team that are here this morning and some that aren't here. Um, what we can do, I'm, I'm glad uh, for the comments from Dr. Mills and from uh, Mr. Ingersoll. We'll get the, uh, the equity report. We'll do a summary. I mean, you can read the whole thing, but we'll kind of summarize it and give that to the board in bullet form. And then um, whatever groups, if, if uh, you want us to go with you, a, a staff member to go with you to make the presentation or, you, or if whichever, you know, or you want them to come here, or we want to do it via Teams or Zoom or whatever mechanism, just let, just let me know and uh, you know, we'll be able to do that. And then we can also summarize, again, the equity report to share that, that good news that's out there and what we do, not just with the graduation rate, with, but with overall K-12 um, uh, learning, teaching and learning, and uh, I'd be happy to do that. And, and as Dr. Wild mentioned, we are working with our administrators. I have a small cadre of folks that I'm forming right now too, that I always do this on the side uh, just to talk one-on-one, -on -one. I, I have a few principals, a few uh, assistant principals, and uh, some district staff. Uh, we have not met yet. We'll meet, this, uh, we'll meet in October just so we have some informal conversations and they know it's a safe place to talk about, you know, what are we doing well, what do we need to improve on in, in this particular area? Because I think that when you, when you talk about policy and you talk about what you're doing, if you don't talk to those closest to it, then you miss it. And so I think it's so important, and that's something I've always strived to do. Um, is to listen to everybody that's out there and uh, sometimes they won't say it in a public meeting but they'll say it in private to me because they know uh, we've developed a culture of trust and it's okay to say what you don't what I may not necessarily want to hear so we've got this moving forward um, and are looking forward to, to the year and uh, I thought this was an appropriate time at the beginning of the year well we're really in our first month uh, going into the fifth week but to share that with the board members as well and then uh, be happy to again to, to communicate to go out to the community or However, whatever mechanism you want to utilize, just let me know. And uh, we're here to support and to get the information. And I would encourage the board to go through the, that was a great suggestion, to go through the, uh, the training that we're doing as well. Um, there's some good stuff. There's hard questions. You've got to look inside. You've got to look inward and, uh, and answer questions and be honest with yourself. And so uh, I, I found it very, very um, fascinating and interesting. Again, thank you to Helen and her team. Um, Terrence, Terrence always enjoys public speaking. And, uh, and being in the front. And so uh, Terrence put on his good suit today, and I appreciate this. I want to say this about Terrence and some of his teams here. Um, he's going to give you just a brief presentation of what we've done with the, the computers. But behind the scenes, um, what they have done is, is just you know, remarkable, he and his team. Uh, and um, 
This is probably one of the greatest challenges we have is technology in the world today. And, uh, and, he, and he lives this 24 seven and he has done a, a, an outstanding job with his team. And I just asked him to come just make a, a couple comments to the board as to where we are as we're going into the school year. Now that I've built you up. <laughs> Don't fail you I now. I not go down. With my skinny suit today. So yeah. board chair, board members and Mr. Jen, thank you for taking uh, this opportunity. Before I begin, I just wanna talk a little bit about leadership. And in IT, uh, you really don't hear about the functions we do daily unless something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And as a leader and a proud leader of a department uh, in IT, um, when we had our first blip, either you could fall apart or you come together and you build and you take on the challenge and move it forward. And that's exactly what my teammates and I and our, our other departments help um, provide it to our students. And I'm gonna take you through a little portion of that this morning. But before I do, I do have some very important people here today and some that are on the front lines as well. And they have done a phenomenal job. As Mr. Jen said, that's a 24-7. Many of them have children in the school. Uh, a lot of them are married to teachers. So when they left here for their go home, they understood what was going on in the classrooms and they take great pride in that and the growth what I'm gonna show you today is cutting edge, leading edge on challenges that we brought, to, brought forth of what we expect IT for our students, the opportunities that that will give to our students and changed all of our systems to make sure that we could deliver a service that you, our community, our students, and our parents could be proud of. So let's begin. For us to work, I'm going to provide you a status update on the uh, first one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but to the left, starting on the left, that will be our network infrastructure. Does everybody and, have this? Do we have a? Yes, everybody should have it you in have your. A, another handout. That's our network uh, infrastructure. We'll talk you a little bit about where that hiccup was and how we mitigated that. Um, we'll talk about our computers and where we are with our deployment of computers. But then I want to talk about how we did that and the new innovation solutions we put in place so we could really move forward quickly in providing the systems to students. That is called Intune for Education. Then I want to give you some data about our support centers, both our helplines and our broke fix, where parents are coming in and we're working with them. Um, and the last is security. And the reason I want to talk about security is in the bottom right hand corner our mission is to ensure all students graduate from safe and caring schools equipped with the knowledge skill sets and the desire to succeed none of this happens without making sure our children are our children are protected and while we put that at the emphasis we make sure it's extra work it makes us think a lot more it allows us to bring in partners to help us make sure we're providing an environment that meets the students' needs in the classroom, but also protects them from any of the societal things. With that said, all of these things must work together. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't get nerded out here and go into the weeds, but give you just an idea of what that would look like. A 30 second video. sure everything is working together the horns are working with our percussions everything is coming together to make sure that the learning activities that students are using daily are up and functioning our first stop is in our network as we started if you look at the bottom left there's a red box that is where our first challenge uh, occurred believe it or not these are tech words fat pipe is a network appliance that mr. Jen had talked about that had failed. So we had to go through several iterations and code changes and, and making sure those systems allow us to bring both of our internet service providers in case one went out. This device allows us to bring, have one device on Windstream and another device on AT&T. This was one of our areas where we needed to make sure that appliance was back up and running. The second one is Content Keeper. Content Keeper is our web filtering and our security platform 
And that routes, even though students are not on our campus, they're at their homes, we route all their traffic back through us as a requirement to the Children's Internet Protection Act. All of their information comes back to the district and goes through our multiple filters to make sure that everything they're seeing is, is having. We had to do some, um, is protected. We had to make sure that we ramp that up. And by that I mean we made sure that there were 14, uh, five filtering systems that allowed us not to slow down. So we tweaked that process. And the last one was Teams itself, making sure that we were allowing that to go right to the internet, not being routed, go right to our cloud security so that students can work on Teams. And then all of those, all of that work together has now provided um, absolute um, perfect teams. We have some issues with home networks and those types of things. We take care of it. But this was our first uh, work during those first couple days to make sure everything was up and working. Device statuses. Currently we have handed out 20,834 devices to all of our students out on my school. Some students didn't take devices, but a majority of them did from that. A lot of those devices came through our procurement over the summer, and as you're aware, there is a national shortage of computers out there. We worked with our partners twice a day, making sure we were on the phone, working on supply chain lines, working on getting them off the boat, overnighting them to Memphis, making sure we had trucks here on site. We trained our staff to work forklifts, become CDL certified, to make sure there were no barriers to make sure we got all of those devices here. We are still waiting devices, about 8,300 of those devices, 2,744, 2,744 will arrive this week, and we continue to work on making sure we can procure those devices and get them out to schools. If you look at the two data sets, the one on the right is our help desk call. You can see the first day of school. That is just the parent line, that's 1,594 calls. As you can see, as the week progressed, and as people got comfortable with this new way of learning, you can see our calls are around 30 calls per day on average, which matches our broke fix. Our broke fix sites are here at the district office as well as performance based, and that's if parents have an issue with their device, have trouble logging in, they show up and we staff two technical teams to assist them during the day, every day from 8.30 to 11.11, um, where uh, individuals can come and we can either trade out their device if it's not functioning the way they want, help them log in, all of those types of things. We average about 30 visits at both sites per day, um, five days a week uh, from that. Those numbers are starting to go down as well. Lastly, we want to make sure that keeping students safe, all places, all times, all platforms. So wherever they are, we said, my school learning is going to look different this year. That was a requirement of us to change all of our practices as well. How do we make sure that we're protecting our students? We make sure there's clients on their devices that they come back here, they come through our filtering. We make sure that we are logging all that information to make sure that our students are protected. Innovation. In tune deployment. This allowed us to gather the computers. As they came, we just handed the kids a box. The students went home and were able to go through a very simple process of selecting US, keyboards, those types of process, and actually set up the device themselves. Once they do that, the applications are going directly to the cloud and being populated down to the machines. That is really important. So as we change our curriculum, as updates come out, we have a portal we can sit and send out right to any of the kids off-site. All those updates, any new curriculum, they don't have to come back in. We still have some current laptops where if we did have an, um, an update or something of that nature, they might have to come back on board. But anything new, which was a change from the summer, we wanted to make sure that wherever those students were with their learning device that we could push those changes out. From a security perspective, we can make sure that the secure virus definitions, malware definitions, we're pushing them out. And as the child logs on, we're sending all those new updates, all of the security patches they need for their device right at their homes. So that meant 
this summer in a very short framework, four weeks, changing our complete configuration to, from an on-site deployment to a cloud-based solution. And those individuals, people like Antonio Vargas, Vladimir Sidorov, Niall Gentry, Angelo, those individuals work 24-7 to make sure that we met the time frame to make sure that we can deploy that out. So at this point, we feel real good about where we are, things working for everybody. Do we get lots of calls? Absolutely. I check in with eight students every day. How are things working for you today? Fourth grader at River's Edge, an eighth grader at Southern Oaks. I talk to a second grader at River's Edge. Hey, good morning. Are you able to connect on Teams? And they become part of my troubleshooting. Yes, I'm good today, thank you. Okay, great day. Hey, I'm taking a test right now. Perfect. So I'm checking in, making sure that I'm getting a pulse of what's going on. It's also, after hours, I become the help desk. So I've talked to grandparents. I've talked to parents, listening to what they say. We're listening to our principals, our teachers. When we ask who, they give us a sample and we make sure we're reaching out to those individuals. So at this point, we feel that we have overcome any of our issues. Things are running smoothly, but that doesn't mean that in the next five minutes, 10 minutes. So paying attention to every single detail is part of the fabric within our design of our leadership teams. And we do that every day. 5 a.m., we receive an email every morning to make sure every device on our infrastructure has been tested, has responded back, or we're up and we're at it and we're trying to get it clear. So with that said, just a brief update. Um, any questions? Board members, questions? Uh, Dr. Mills? Uh, I know that this is very trying for all of us, you know. Um, I speak with a lot of the parents as well, and it's so important that we do have for the my ready for my students my what is it my school students that we have um, what you're doing now we appreciate what you're doing uh, IT department plays a huge part in this and in going into the homes and I think I'm kind of feeding back off of what I said earlier with the uh, African-American uh, history presentation and you, you, you covered that. What are the parents saying? What are the teachers saying? Mm -hmm. You know, how's it going for the teachers? Are they, are they able to smoothly do what they need to do? Um, are the parents, already parents are just like screaming. They're like, they appreciate teachers more than ever before, <laughs> for sure. And sure. I hear that over and over again in the community. But I, I, I just want to make sure that we have that connection with the community, like you said, where we know what's really going on in real time and real places. And, and what people are perceiving is very important because we can say what we're doing, but we need to, the people need to see what we're doing. And so I appreciate the presentation and, and, and really all that what you, I've called you a few times. Yes, ma'am. You know, um, and, and, and parents just appreciate what's going on with the school district. Now there is a help desk Correct. online Correct. There, there's there one, one online line? as well as our phone as well. Okay. 429 help. Okay. And the parents, if they're right there and they're having a problem, is it somewhere on the computer on the child's teams and, Correct. and so forth? Okay. Yep. We're able to go ahead and, and, and work with those students that are having difficulties right at that from right from our computer to their computer. Thank you, Terrence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Madam Chair. Terrence, I just want to shout out to you and your team. This has been a heroic effort. When this COVID-19 hit, I think we had a very short window of time to create what needed to be created for basically, what, 38,000 children and, and try and educate parents that weren't computer literate. Uh, I think their children were more computer literate than they were. and. I, I tell you, your team has done some miraculous things. There's a shortage of computers nationwide. Um, I mean, we basically have to remind ourselves we're in the middle of a pandemic and how important this was. And your quick reaction and your team's reaction um, speaks highly for St. Lucie County because I know other counties have not been as successful as, as we have been. So 
thank, thank you to all of you, 24 hours a day. Um, you guys are simply on call, I think, so thank you. Terrence, I do wanna thank you. And I, I've said it before, um, this pandemic, unfortunately happened during election year, but if it didn't happen, uh, you know, I've said it before, this is exciting times. You know, we get to reevaluate the purpose of why we do things. From graduation being changed to having a phenomenal graduation from when we said we weren't gonna do graduation to having graduation. From saying we weren't gonna go to school to, to last year for where we were, the last nine weeks to now, and seeing our teachers step up and seeing your department step up. And um, it has moved us fast forward five to 10 years where, we're where we were going to be now. And obviously we can't do it now and get into the weeds, but we need to start planning for next year and the policies and implementations for next year. And you're like, I can't believe this guy's talking about this now. And I know you're talking about it, yeah. but we do have to start looking at what we're going to do like how we implemented it at Westwood and how we implemented it at Port Lucy High School. And also, you know, you start talking about curriculum, textbook buys and everything else and how it's gonna affect our budget. I mean, this is exciting stuff. I mean, it gets me going, saving money, looking at stuff, how we're gonna make money. Not really make money, sorry. <laughs> I know you keep on around. Uh, but you know I'm about the dollar and I'm really concerned about that. You know, this is, I pay taxes, and I pay a lot of taxes, and you know, I, that, that's, that's a concern of mine. But, but I know that you're on top of it, and you and your team, and this is just like, this is, it's sad to say, but I'm excited about education because now it really puts a focus on it. If we weren't going through an election cycle, there would be more of a focus, and there, we'd be like first responders, we'd be heroes, mm -hmm. more so than what we already are. So, you know, thank you again, and I um, really do appreciate it, and the board does appreciate you too. Thanks, Trent. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a question, but, uh, I will give you some significant kudos because it's having the right team in place always to be able to react to a crisis. And if we didn't have the right team in place to start with, we would not be where we are with our, with our kids and our faculty. We would not be setting the bar so high that other, other counties are fussing because they can't do what we're doing. Of course, we're willing to share, maybe. But uh, I think it's being able to make sure that we have the right people there always so no matter what the crisis is, our team can pull together quickly and react quickly and move us forward regardless of the situation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Terrence. Again, I uh, appreciate all the comments from the board members. They have done an, an excellent job. Uh, and it is all about the right people in the right place. And you don't win with people, you win with the right people. And we're, we're just very, very fortunate in all of our departments. And a lot of the cabinet members are here right now. Um, that's, that's why things go the way they do, because of the, you know, we, whatever the challenge is, I don't really call them problems, I call them challenges. And then we want to have a mechanism in place to kind of fix it. And, and so uh, the numbers there on 30 calls a day out of 40,000 students, is, and like Terrence said, it could all go down in a minute, you know, and uh, they'll have it back, back up and running, but there's probably, it's one of the greatest challenges we have is in the technology piece, and we're very pleased with what they've done. Our teachers have really stepped up too, because this required for our instructors uh, a complete paradigm shift for many of them to do online, and some are versed in it, and some are just like, you know, are pretty good, and others are novice at that, and so we're, we're doing trainings with them as well, uh, and uh, you know, our students, like you said, the students are always ahead of us anyway. Um, whether we want to believe that or not, they're always usually a step ahead in different areas. We had one student, I won't name the school, but it was a third grade classroom and he did like a screensaver of his picture on the screen while the teacher was teaching. Um, and uh, so she thought he was there. And uh, she caught him, she caught it during the, she caught it during the, during the course of the, of the lesson. That was a third grader. So uh, Terrence has already um, checked out his resume and uh, uh, a little young. Uh, I believe it was a young man young, uh, that did that. So, uh, you know, a lot of interesting stories that are coming out. Uh, I just want to share some data here and then we'll go into our executive session. I did pass out to the board uh, the latest. Um, this comes out every day and um, this shows our my schools right around still, we're holding firm right around 45% and 45% uh, for traditional. And you see the breakdown by school. And then also I gave you a sheet of paper that uh, lists by school 
Uh, on one side is the student counts, where you can see we have 35 positive cases. Eight of those are in my school, four are others. It could be um, mosaic, it could be dual enrollment. You can see the number that are quarantined. And then the undeclared really is, um, you know, some folks have stayed home, uh, you know, maybe working with their doctor, so it's not really an official quarantine. They're go just going through a transition period to get more information as to whether they come back to school or not. And then on the other side, you have the employee count. You can see 61 positive, and this is as of July 1st. Uh, and I'll update the board. I'll probably send this to you each Friday, because this just breaks it down by school. I think this will be better for you uh, than me just giving the, uh, the numbers. And then you can see them there, the quarantine, uh, and, then the, um, and then the total. Uh, you know, what we've seen in our school centers is um, we've, we have this down, Bridget is here and Bill is here. They're kind of like um, the dispatchers. When the information comes in, we work very, very closely. We, I think we have a really nice system working right now uh, with the health department and then notification of the parents uh, and the parent groups. And uh, so that's going smoothly and hopefully we'll see that, um, you know, die out a little bit more you know, and, and, and slow up. Um, but uh, that's why our seating charts are important. Our bus seating charts are so important. We're able to identify students, contact parents right away, and then take the appropriate action. So this will be a work in progress for the entire um, foreseeable future. And so I just wanted to give the, uh, the board members that information. And then lastly, is Brian in here? There he is, Brian's over in the corner. I just want to co uh, commend Brian's team. Uh, they had to, to send up this um, report to the, uh, to the state. It's the um, security, the school security risk assessment. So they go out to 43 schools. Each school has 425 question assessment, which I know is, is very bureaucratic and time consuming and probably could be condensed. But he and his team have completed that and we've sent that back up to the state. Also Vaughn, uh, Peter, Rob Diamito, and Jeff Schultz uh, uh, have worked in other departments, Janet Pet uh, Peterson um, as well. So he's done a really well, uh, an excellent job to get that up by the deadline to the state. Because while we still focus on our COVID and what's happening, school is up and running. We still have all the other issues you deal with with the school security, teaching and learning, dealing with the issues. Um, we've so far had a nice football season. We've got volleyball going on, even though um, not a winning Don't record. At, okay, <laughs> and uh, you know, no, so we're, we're trying, we're trying to make it, uh, you know, as you know, best meet the needs of the kids, particularly the seniors understanding the senior year, the principals are coming up well, with unique things at their school center to recognize certain milestones and markers in, in a senior year. Other, other principals are doing something similar at the elementary levels. So we're trying to, you know, make it as normal as we can and, and make sure that we, you know, it's not just the school's all about life. It's not just the academics. There's a whole other piece that's to it. And so we're trying to work hard on that. That completes the board session. What we need to do is take Unless there's Madam a, I'm Chair, sorry. I, I have a couple yeah. things I'd like to say, if I may. I'm sure. The mask. Uh, we spent some time talking about our African uh, American his, history, and that and I think when we started this path many years ago, we didn't have this same number of different Hispanic cultures in our county that we do now. This is uh, Hispanic uh, History Month, and I think that we need to recognize <clears throat> publicly the, the contributions that the variety of people that come from all over the world that Hispanic cultures bring to our county. And that's a very, very positive thing. Normally there are things be going on. Of course, everything's been canceled. Also, the Families of the Treasure Coast has a warm line for parents who are, uh, their kids are in my school for assistance on how they can learn how to help their own children. The gap we have found so far is math from fourth grade up not so much high school, but fourth through eighth. And that has been uh, an ongoing issue, so we'll be addressing that. But that is another resource in our community for parents to call to get some assistance on uh, how to help their own children. And of course, uh, the notorious RBG died this week. One of her statements was you should always lead outside of yourself. I think that's what this board and this community does. Also, she believed that all meant all, and that's what we believe. All means all, no exceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. Well, there being no other business to come before us today, we are adjourned and we'll give time for the room to clear out and we'll reconvene in an executive session right here.